it just didn't fit with who he was. Because the one thing I was absolutely 100% sure about was that Will Jordan was infertile. I was feeling devastated as I drove home. Nothing I knew about him could be correct. Is he who he says he is? Mary's whole world has been capsized. As soon as I got home, I texted him to say, we need to talk now. I want to look into his eyes and see what he was going to say. I wanted an explanation. He said, please, just hear me out. Just, just hear me out until you make it, you know, until everything's said, and then you can make up your mind. He said, I'll be back in a moment. And he went out the room. And he was in the hallway, on the phone, pacing backwards and forwards. My mobile phone sitting beside me started beeping with texts that said, SIM update, and MOD relay, and ODCI relay. I was very confused. This is not what I was expecting. And he came back through, looked into my eyes and said, I've been given permission to tell you. And I was thinking, OK, this is interesting. Where is this going? What Will reveals is the last thing Mary is expecting. I work for the CIA, babe. He explained to me that he worked for the Central Intelligence Agency. He described it as ODCI, the official department of Central Intelligence. The updates from the ODCI and the MOD relay were to, to make sure that they could access me at any time. My phone would have to be updated and bugged, basically. He was on secondment from the ODCI to the Ministry of Defense. His specialist area was Israel and the Palestinian territories, dealing with insurgents and dealing with unsavories and helping protect others. I didn't disbelieve him because why would he be telling me this unless it was true? Will also tells her that the house she found is actually a CIA safe house. And obviously it had children's equipment in the garden because that made it look innocuous as something that other people wouldn't notice. Mary finds it hard to believe, but Will is so persuasive and so eloquent, and she's so much in love with him, she gives him the benefit of the doubt. He actually cried and told me that I was the one thing that made life worth living, that he couldn't believe how close he'd come to losing me. He now knew why he was doing what he was doing, keeping the world safe because of me and my daughter. I felt very proud of him. After Will Jordan reveals this big, dark truth that he actually works for the CIA, it all seemed to add up, and it seemed to be proof that what he was telling her was the truth. I was totally in love with him, and so I trusted him. He had money packets that were sealed plastic envelopes with the Ministry of Defense stamped on them. He used to carry a gun around. He'd never let me see the gun, but I could certainly feel it under his jacket and I saw the holster. Will claims that her discovery of the safe house has put him under pressure. It means he'll be away for longer periods. He'd had to now shut down that safe house because it was now exposed, and all the team had had to move down south. So it meant that he wasn't able to be so often up in Edinburgh. And I felt quite guilty about it because it made life very difficult for him. Will tells Mary that life for her will be very different now. He explained to me that I would be under surveillance and that I would have to be very careful. And I would have to be able to keep this secret. He told her that the house was bugged, the phone was bugged, she was under surveillance, that somebody was following her all the time. I mean, she was scared to death. I was so isolated from everybody, feeling desperately lonely, but nothing prepared me for the shock that was coming. To her amazement, Mary finds out she's pregnant. How can I be pregnant by a man who's infertile?
I was completely convinced that Will would think I'd had an affair. And I had thought long and hard about how I was going to deal with this. I was very, very worried telling him. But his reaction was extraordinary. He, he leaned against the wall. All the blood drained from his face. He went ashen white and looked at me and said, you're magical. Wow. Wow. The family. We will. Oh my God. It's amazing. It's a miracle. Beautiful. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> when Mary got pregnant, she was thrilled. Here she was able to give the man that she loved what he always wanted and thought that he would never be able to have. It made me feel that this was something that I was able to give him that nobody else would ever have ever managed to do. The child was very special. We were having a, a walk with the family. He drew me aside and asked formally for my permission to marry Mary. I was quite impressed by it, and I said yes. We'd booked Dundas Castle. I'd got myself a beautiful white dress with a veil, and everything was planned. The invitations had gone out, and it was going to be an absolutely wonderful wedding. I did genuinely feel that this was a, a turning point. But Will contacted me and said, actually, there was a problem. He was going to have to go abroad, and we were going to have to postpone the wedding. I was devastated. Once again, Will shatters Mary's happiness. But he says it's not his fault. He claims he's being sent on a top secret mission. He was in the Palestinian territories. He was supposed to only be there for 24 hours, but he got trapped. He was living for three months in rubble. He sent me the images of bulldozed buildings, children lying dead in the street, images of the devastation that was around him. This made her feel like her man was a hero. And probably also made her feel that she had no right to complain. Look at what he was doing. He's out there saving the world. When he was getting access to the satellite, it was usually in the middle of the night. So I was very sleep deprived as well. Danger's everywhere, honey. Right now we're pinned down and we can't move. I was worried that he would never come home at all. And even if he, if he did come home, he was going to be scarred by this. Hello? She was stuck at home. She was constantly on edge, wondering what was happening to him. Everything she had was invested in him and their relationship. I felt so incredibly frustrated in not being able to say, I know where he is, I know what he's doing, and I can't tell you. Something very odd was going on here. I was beginning to wonder if Will was actually just some kind of Walter Mitty character. It was desperately lonely. Not only did I not have him by my side, but I also couldn't talk to my family. I was totally isolated. Will has forbidden Mary from telling anyone about his top secret CIA work. If she does, she'll put them all in danger. But in desperation, she confides in her closest friend. When she told me that Will worked for the CIA, it didn't seem quite believable but she was absolutely sure. She believed in him and that what he was doing was good. Mary's baby is due any day now, but there's no sign of Will. I felt frustrated by the fact he just didn't seem to care. I texted to tell him that I'd gone into labor and didn't get a reply. But even Will's absence can't spoil the happiness she feels when her baby comes into the world. This lovely little girl with blue eyes and black curly hair I was born safely and, and healthy. I fell in love with her from the moment I saw her. She was absolutely beautiful. Will wasn't there. I felt, you know, well, Superman's off saving the world. People's lives are being saved. 
How can I complain about being stood up, even for the birth of our child, if he's going through such horrors? After almost six months marooned in Palestine, Mary's fiance finally reappears at the family home. He was very thin, very pale, very ill. He looked almost half the man he had been. He lay down on the bed with, with our daughter and the baby and just looked at her and just looked at her for hours, just was so in awe of the fact that he was now a father. But mentally and emotionally, he seemed like a, he really had lost faith in the service. He'd lost faith in what he was doing. He wanted out. Will tells Mary he wants to leave the CIA. The trouble is, they're reluctant to let him go. I believe that they were actually punishing him, that they were making life difficult for him, as an example to other people, that you don't leave. The CIA were asking us for money to effectively buy him out of the service. He thinks that if he's able to extricate himself from the CIA, then he could come home to her and their children and they could be a family. At that point, I was starting to really not trust what he was saying. Just there were so many inconsistencies. You know, why would he have to pay his way out of the CIA? I just felt there's no other option that I had to give him the money. I was under his control. Mary hands over $20,000 of her savings. It's a price worth paying. Now he can start his new life with her. And I just felt finally things were going to change. Finally, we were going to be together as a family. It was a very happy time for me. Now he was alive and safe and well, and I didn't have to worry about his, him being in danger. 